Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yen. I'm a PhD student with Sandy, and I'm interested in using machine learning and causal inference to understand how decisions are made on social networks. So today, I'll go, I'm going to talk about an approach to infer the underlying relationships of individuals based on their actions. Um, we're now living in this increasingly connected society. Um, starting from the sixth degree of separation by Stanley Milgram, um, Facebook recently found that the average degree of separation on their platform is about 4.57. People are not merely connected, they also influence the decision making of one another. You may wonder what does this mean for policymakers and stakeholders? In fact, they will be able to in, um, design different network-based uh, interventions such as information diffusion, large-scale behavioral change, marketing campaign, political campaign with these networks. It is often the case, however, the decision makings of individuals are readily available, but the networks remain hidden. So here I'm going to provide an approach to you so that you'll be able to infer the networks and do these amazing things such as information diffusion. Okay, let me give you a little bit intuition of why this is even possible, why we can infer the relationship just based on people's actions. There are two types of relationships when people are making decisions um, with their friends. The first is strategic complement. What it is, is that the more you engage in some action, the more utility your friend will get and the more your friend will engage in that action. Think about when you decide how much time you spend on a social app. The more time your friend will spend on it, the more utility you'll get by engaging with your friend and the more, you, uh, the more time you'll spend on the social app. Another example is the strategic substitute. What it is is that the more your friend will engage in certain action, the less utility you'll get and the you will not, you'll stay away from that action. An example I have here is buying a book. If a friend already have a book, you can borrow the book from your friend without making the purchase by yourself. What I said can be formulated as games played on networks. So um, when you are making a decision, there are some mental math you're doing in your mind. You'll be thinking about how much benefit I'll get. We call it marginal benefit. You think about how much cost I need to pay, and you think about the decisions of your neighbors because that will also influence your decision. We predict the decisions people make using Nash equilibrium, which is the steady state that people will not deviate because if they deviate from the action, their utility will decrease. Um, another uh, interesting phenomenon useful for our study is homophily, which says that um, people who have similar characteristics are more likely to become friend. Translate into our study is people who have similar marginal benefit are more likely to become friend. So with this um, Nash equilibrium and this a homophilous marginal benefit, we'll be able to propose an objective function where we have two objectives. First, we want to maximize the accuracy of our predicted actions, and second, we want to make sure that um, the marginal benefits will be homophilously distributed. So this is our method, and let me show you some results, and you can think about how this can benefit in your businesses. Um, the first example we have is to learn the trade relationships based on the total imports and exports of different goods among different countries. So that we'll be able to infer these trade relationships among different uh, countries. Another example is we learn, try to learn the social relationships um, based on the adoption decisions of different households. So by observing what utilities they purchase, whether they adopt microfinance or not, and so on and so forth, we'll be able to learn the relationships uh, among households. There are different other applications you'll be able to do with our method. Um, so for example, you can detect communities by doing some stratification or segmentation about your customers. An example that I give you here is we use the voting, ref uh, the referendum, uh, voting on the referendums of different cantons in Switzerland um, to infer the underlying relationship among different cantons so that we'll be able to uncover some political alliances. So as you can see, different color here represent um, different underlying community. This is one example. And second, you'll be able to design some targeting strategies. For example, you, you can identify some well-connected individuals so that you can target these individuals for your intervention or for your marketing campaign. 
The last example, you can design some um, other intervention strategies. For example, you can give some individuals some coupons. So this individuals might, might, might adopt your product and thereby their friends adopt and have this ripple effect on this network. So I hope this can be a helpful um, approach. And if you have any questions, you can come and find me. Thank you. Super.